It doesn't look like these frogs can get any more comfortable. Now in this video we're going to be talking about Darwin's finches, okay? Basically, Darwin's finches is an example of natural selection, okay? It's one of the examples that you need to know for the IB. There are three examples, but Darwin's finches is one of them, okay? And it's, exam it's an example of survival of the fittest or natural selection, okay? So essentially, finches is a type of bird, as you'll see shortly. And the story of Darwin's finches happens, happened in South America, specifically, off the coast um off the coast of ecuador so if we go off the coast of ecuador around here there is a bunch of islands okay these islands are called the Galap galapagos islands okay and they look like this they look sort of like this now what happened was around a million years ago so a very long time um, a bunch of birds, okay, around 30 birds came to these islands and got established. So before this time, there was no birds here. So 30 birds came to this island. And initially, since they were so few, there were so many resources, so many um, types of food to eat from, and they can all survive very easily. But after a while, these birds started getting more and more. They started reproducing, and they became, the islands became extremely crowded. And what happens when things get crowded? That, um, then competition is going to start happening, right? So these birds are going to have to start competing for food. So what actually happened was um, around this time, after they duplicated a lot, so still around a million years ago, um, wait a second here. So what happened was uh, they duplicated a lot, so they became a very big number, a very big amount. And, and the only way they could survive, survive if is if these birds um, spread out, okay? And when they spread out, so some of them would go to this island here, some would go to this place here, some would go to this place here, and the only way they could survive in this place that they went to is if they had the ability to survive there. So to be able to survive on this island here, um, you had to be able to dig under the soil because this is soil right here. So this island had a lot of soil, but under the soil, there was a lot of like insects and things to eat. So for a bird to be able to survive here, it had to have the ability to dig under soil and eat worms and things like that. But if it went to this part of the island, um, the only way it could survive really well, the, the highest source of food was under the bark of tree. So we know this is a piece of bark, okay, and bark normally lies on trees, right? And so the only way a bird could survive well on this location here is if it was able to have a beak that was efficient at breaking off the bark so it can eat the foods behind the bark. And in this last place here um, is a place where there's a lot of flowers and so the only way the birds can survive if they go here is if their beaks are suited for digging into these flowers and eating from them okay so that's basically what happened since it was really crowded the numbers got really big they had to all um spread out okay and to survive they had to have the feature so what happened was so these birds would now spread out and go everywhere now, the only way they could survive at each location is if they were adapted for that location. So after a while, after evolution, many, many, many years, specifically millions of years, I mean a million years, so a million years later, what happened was this, this one species of bird managed to become many species. Okay, so specifically, remember here, there was um, the only way the bird could survive is if it had some kind of ability to dig under soil and get the food from there. So after many years, only the, only the birds um, that managed to be able to do that would survive. And so after millions of years or a million years, um, this bird kind of developed into a new species called the ground finch. The ground finch, okay? Um, and, and this finch had a nice beak that was short and stubby, which is very efficient for digging on, under the soil, okay? But in, on the contrary, to be able to survive there, um, it eventually, over evolution, morphed into a kind of bird that is called a tree finch, okay? And then over here, a cactus finch, and they all have different beaks. This one has a very, very flat beak that is very good for breaking off bark, it's strong. And then this one is very sharp and long, which is very good for reaching into the blossoms of the flowers here right okay so you get the point it was very interesting so this is what do you call it this is darwin's finches okay finches is a type of bird 
These are all finches, and they all originated from these 30 birds that came to this island once upon a time, this Galaga Galapagos Islands once upon a time, and it just got so crowded, they all had to spread out and compete, and the only way they could survive is by over millions of years, I mean, was by um, having the specific feature, and all the ones that didn't have this feature would die, and so only the ones that were well adapted would pass on their traits, and so after m a million years, we finally formed slowly, very slowly with evolution, through natural selection, survival of the fittest, we formed these different species. Now, at this point, there's over 13 species on this island that they found. I have just shown you three important ones, okay? Now, this is it for Darwin's story, but you need to know one other small story, okay? And um, let's just quickly go over it. It's also related to these islands. So recently, in around 1977, there was a couple, okay? This couple uh, was called Peter and Rosemary Grant, okay? They were um, husband and wife, okay? And they came to this island here where the ground finch was. And they studied these, fi these, these, these finches for over 30 years, okay? And in the process, um, something interesting happened. So on one of these years, 1977, there was a drought. A drought, meaning extreme water drought. There was no water. And so what happened was, um, normally there's a lot of small seeds that these ground finches can eat. But... Now with this drought, these small seeds were very scarce, okay? So there was very little small seeds. And so the only way these ground finches could survive very well is if they were able to eat the big seeds instead. Let me show you. So let's say, um, so here's the seeds. Let's say um, we were considering in the past, there was, um, there's not normally, there should be many small seeds. But because of this drought, these small seeds stopped um, was very scarce and now there was always these big seeds but um, these the, the birds didn't care about these big seeds because they had these small seeds but because these small seeds are now very scarce these birds need to eat the big seeds and so the the ones that were able to have a big enough beak to eat this this big seed were, would be able to survive whereas the other ones that didn't have a big enough beak um, would die because they couldn't eat these big seeds so those that were able to survive, because they had a big beak, could pass on their genetics. And so what these, these two scientists noticed was that the next year, the average sizes of these beaks of the ground finches increased by 3%. And this is another example of how quickly natural selection can also happen. In one year, all these species, um, this species' beaks already changed, increased in size by 3%, because all the ones with small beaks died and couldn't pass on their genetics, whereas all the ones with big beaks um, could pass on their, their genetics, right? So that's very interesting. So now they all have a 3% bigger beaks, okay, to be able to survive by eating these bigger seeds because the smaller seeds weren't there anymore, okay? So that's all that you need to know about these islands and um, the, the concept of how um, what happened on this islands and how it kind of helped um, prove the idea or support the idea of natural selection or survival of the fittest.